So as you were asking, you know, a lot of rigs were there and the yes. must be there. Mm-hmm. So here you can see there are a lot of rigs which are actually backstage and kept. Looks like a set for Transformers. <laughs> and stop motion is something I think it's making a comeback after quite some time and we are going getting to see lots of amazing short films and art commercials nowadays all thanks to people and artists like you who are making that possible so in animation if you just bre- you can literally break the living things mm-hmm. so the mind goes you know boom you're like what the f- i just see Hello and welcome to Art with Gaurav. Today we'll dive deep into the magical world of stop motion animation with Aman Gupta, a very promising animation artist and director, making captivating stories for people in India and around the world. Let's meet him on the other side of this showreel. Hi Aman, hi. Hi. How are hi, you today? Gaurav. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Very well, very well. So um, it's going to be a, an exciting episode, I believe. And stop motion is something that uh, is, you know, I think it's making a comeback after quite some time. And we are getting to see lots of amazing short films and ad commercials nowadays. All thanks to people and artists like you, who are making that possible. So to yeah. begin with let's um, let's talk about you know your journey and uh, what got you into the world of stop motion and if there are any specific projects or you know some turning points that made you you know get on to the journey and uh, you know carry on with it so please share something with us yeah so basically uh, everything sort of started in covid i i was in college and mm-hmm. uh, i was in my third year of uh, doing bachelor's of design in uh, united world institute of design it's a design college in gandhinagar gujarat mm-hmm. and uh, i was there and i did a couple of things i have done 3d 2d i have done uh, hand drawn animation everything i did but stop motion was something which grabbed my attention and my soul like i i was totally into it when i used to do it and but you know like how how in uh, college assignments you always do it in a group i never mm-hmm. i never got a chance to do it alone like i never mm-hmm. got a chance to do it like you know i i want to make it with my sort of quality and what my sort of like whatever i have in my mind so that sort of opportunity i got when covid happened when everybody was you know they were not uh, worrying about the jobs and all these things where, where when you are a student you somehow think that you know i need a job i i, mm. I need to do certain things so that i can get a job you know so that sort of fear went away when covid came okay. so so there i was like okay i'll do stop motion i'll, I'll just do stop motion mm-hmm. and i converted my whole room into a studio so my bed i threw my mattress away i made it into a stage and uh, then i kept a black sheet and made it like a made a very basic background and then i started making these small small videos and okay. i was from the initial days only i was very influenced with this artist uh, i don't know if you have seen uh, pes so this uh, no no so i he, haven't okay so pes is a stop motion director mm-hmm. who has made uh, couple of uh, stop motion films uh, uh best of ones is one of the honda, honda paper animation yeah i've seen right. that yes yeah okay, so he okay. directed yeah. that stop motion and mm. he's the he's the dis, he's the found you can say actually founder of the stop motion cooking so if you uh one second huh it's one second 
Yep. Yeah. His famous works actually uh, one of Western Spaghetti by Pes. All right. All okay. right. So it's basically he takes up a lot of material, like mm-hmm. very uh, like a bomb he'll take and he'll cut it like a avocado. And oh. yeah, so you know that sort of approach to stop motion I really liked, where you first see that you see you see a bomb. And mm-hmm. then this guy is acting like he's cutting a avocado. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it makes it very interesting and sort of you know your mind switches to a yes. very different direction suddenly. A so very very sort of unconventional uh, you know context suddenly comes in. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, through the acting of it. So mm-hmm. I I I was watching one of the interview where he said that you know he learned. like how the avocado is cut how lemon is cut like how they press it before mm. you know actually cutting the lemon right. so he was he made lemon with the golf ball so oh. one golf ball he took and then he squished it then he cut it so mm. the way things were coming out was very metaphoric mm. so those metaphors kicked me like kick, kicked in my you know head and i was like what can i do in, in this direction So in very initial works, you must have seen that I have done. Uh, I have played a lot with screws and metal objects and yes, made yes. them squishy and stretchy. I tried to make them something like that. Mm-hmm. Made them float, made them fly, made them morph, certain things like that. So I always had this approach because stop motion is a mix of live action world and animation world. where live action always make the things believable whatever you see in front of your eyes yes so so in animation if you just bre- you can literally break the living things mm-hmm. so the mind goes you know boom you're like what the f- let us see mm-hmm. i'm really totally sorry yeah. about using using the word <laughs> no problem no problem <laughs> okay yeah. so so in okay so in graduation project i mm-hmm. uh i approached uh, blackbird studio uh, rajesh thakare and troy wasan okay that you know if i can i always loved their work the way they do their animations are really solid mm-hmm. so to learn from them uh, i i asked him if he can give me some internship internship opportunity or something then you know in that was a covid period that was 2000 i'm talking about 2022 sorry 2021 2020 2020 end around okay. september mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so there i did a two month internship which got converted into my graduation project okay slowly because in All two right. months i i just did the pre production but i really wanted to finish the film so i converted that project itself mm-hmm. to the graduation project so that i can shoot it properly and then mm-hmm. troy can do the stuff Okay okay So so that can, uh, was that the uh, animation that you did with the cardboards and all Yes yes Oh okay that wonderful That was the one so Yeah that was amazing That ap- that approach I wanted uh, so I conveyed this approach to Rajesh that you know what if we take a very solid box and we we make it stretchy and squishy and you know hmm. the mind has to go wild Yeah in that sense like for sure we wanted to make something very blast plastered mm. only in stop motion mm. but mm. using a very rigid material but making it very smooth because to be honest i i was very tired of watching a lot of clay animations because i feel it's a very millennial thing like like initially a lot of people used to do clay animation but mm-hmm. whenever i see clay now i feel like okay it will move now, already mm. that sort of thing it is already gone. done like yeah hmm. so so but this cardboard thing literally pulled my mind and i was totally into it so i'll okay. start with sharing the film first sure sure please yeah and then we'll go towards the behind the scenes and and wonderful, wonderful. because of this project i was wonderful. able to create my company that sells the rigs and armatures now and uh, like okay through the journey i'll i'll tell you what all happened 
all right all but right. this this gave birth to the stop motion company this project mm -hmm. okay can you see it yes all right okay Wow, that was amazing. So this this project actually, I, I learned a lot with this project, and uh, you know, uh, like managing a shoot, like this was around one and a half month of shoot, where mm -hmm. I was animating around sixteen hours daily, and sixteen hours. Yeah, I covered my whole room with black chart papers because we I had a lot of broken windows and all that. So I covered mm -hmm. them because no natural light I can, you know, let enter in the room. Mm -hmm. So I had to paste, uh, I had to cover all the windows in my room with the black chart paper. I also used to shoot mostly in nights so that, you know, there's no disturbance from the lighting part of it, especially. Um, okay. <clears throat> so, do we have a breakdown of the process? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's let's see that. So, the initial idea, uh, what Rajesh discussed with me was, you know, uh, to make a studio promotional video because he really wanted this to be part of his studio showreel, where we can. Uh, and for the context of the video, we were thinking of modernizing the traditional animation devices. And also what all things they do, uh, you'll see a, a camera will come and take a frame and then a lot of frames will come. So all that is like a context with whatever they do with the camera, they play with camera and they play with the frames, pen is there, stylus is there. So, so all those objects we have used, which are there and we use as an artist and animator. So we have used all those things and, you know, morph them in between and and we were we initial from initial time only we had this idea of creating it with the cor corrugated boxes because the main reason was that uh, in the, uh, that people were ordering a lot when you know uh, when the covid happened so rajesh was ordering a lot and he uh, he th there was a pile of corrugated boxes inside his house so then okay. he thought, okay, we can use the corrugated boxes only to create this film. That sort of idea he had for the corrugated box. Then I I started with the research, like what sort of things we can make and what sort of style I want. So mm -hmm. I, I was very influenced with the work of Agilation. This guy is from Iran and he produces like a really good stop motion films. And then you must be knowing works of Petagraph mm -hmm. and Tony. So these guys were what like were the artists which I got influenced from a lot. Then initially I sketched a lot of uh, things which we use like headphones, clapboard, light boxes, uh, video camera, tape recorder, and so and even even the blackbird lettering, How can we you know, use them as a compositions in the frame. How can we uh, scale them? And then once we had all of them, then I started with uh, sort of storyboarding it. And then after the storyboard was done, then Rajesh made an animatic out of it. They, these are the initial shoots which I showed to Rajesh. That, you know, something like this I want. Like something very mm -hmm. moving and like, something very very flowy the flow of it has to be like very smooth mm -hmm. and then i storyboarded it the whole thing and then i gave it okay. to rajesh 
who who did the animatics for it so i'll show you the animatics oops one second i think i missed it yes Uh, mm -hmm. are you familiar with the animatic as a yes yes artist? okay so uh, this shows that you did the entire kind of the entire animation in 2d first in 2d first so that we and uh, then you... as a as an animator okay. and director you need a, you need this confirmed thing where you where you know that what is going to be made mm -hmm. and how it will look otherwise all the all the hard work which is going to happen shouldn't go in the waste so we need right, a proper right. animatic so that uh, you know final animation ka one glimpse you know that okay this is how mm. it will feel at least okay yeah so i was about to ask you a question regarding you know the role of drawing in stop motion animation here we have the answer you animated the entire thing in 2d first in the in the form of animatics which is yeah. essentially um, a video version of the storyboard if i'm not wrong yeah yes and it's a timed version you can say it's a timed version okay so you are yeah. actually timing each and every shot as it should be in the final one and then you take it to the actual stop motion animation okay wonderful yes okay so these this was the look and feel like once mm -hmm. we were logged on the feel as in the movement feel of it then this is the look and feel as in the how the final frame will look so mm -hmm. you'll see it's approximately very similar to the final film uh so all the okay, cardboard boxes are done. <laughs> looks looks so this pretty is, much as good as final yeah as good as final but look and feel are supposed to be very refined where mm -hmm. you see uh, that you know this is how the final film will look but surprisingly okay. rajesh locked it in the first go only because mm -hmm. he was very he had this idea of you know camouflaging all the rigs with the background so i painted all the rigs and everything with black paint so okay. in, even in the final film you will see a lot of rigs popping up but they mm -hmm. won't uh, you know they won't disturb you with the main film main content okay so and for that our okay this was this was the production part when everything was logged and everything was finalized okay how will it look how mm -hmm. it's going to be there then the production happened where i started making the props and uh, i started making developing all these uh, rajesh also made some of the props which he he sort of made it in a very interlocking system which he sent to me here and um, most of the props were made in made here only in jaipur the shoot was happening okay. in jaipur and rajesh was actually in mumbai so all right yeah mm -hmm. and uh, so we were going with the feel of you know uh, we don't want to you know cut the cardboard totally mm -hmm. and we wanted mostly we have folded the cardboard and made all the props however possible okay. but wherever so there is a minimum uh, amount of pasting and cutting yes yes okay so that that cardboard feel is still there we wanted those mm -hmm. curvy sort of lines which are there and we wanted it to be felt like cardboard okay. we don't want to change mm -hmm. the material as such mm -hmm. so here you can see the bird which is which was there it see the size of the logo the blackbird mm -hmm. logo then this was the blast where you see the whole yes blast happened before you know before the letters popped up and is, is this like uh, everything on a single rig or 
there are multiple rigs for the blast scene oh for the blast scene in the next slide it will come there are multiple okay, rigs okay okay yeah so mm-hmm. so basically uh, in this animation video you will see that the whole thing is happening in the air nothing is flat yes nothing has that must have been ha- very challenging very challenging so in the production point of view uh you know i started making rigs with uh, you know sabzi walas have those weights 1 kg 2 kg weights they have mm-hmm. yes so i was actually you know buying some of the fruits for my home and you know i saw these weights i was looking very and they were very neat initially mm-hmm. i used to make it out of stones i used to use stones as rigs ka weight okay then okay. i thought okay for a cleaner rig i can actually mm-hmm. use these weights which are mm. there with them so i bought those and i i hot glued uh, a lot of wire in that like aluminum wires and then i made a rig out of it okay uh okay so you'll see some kind of, of a from, diy thing yeah okay yes some of the rigs mm-hmm. you can see here uh, which are actually made from just wood and uh, some of the either uh, we call it bart like a lot of people call it bart yes yes so i i purchased some of them and i made a rig out of them and mm-hmm. here you see everything is mostly on in the air even here i use some of the cardboard blocks only as a rig sometimes and this was the whole shoot room where i shot the whole thing this is mm-hmm. yeah you will see on the windows you will see i covered them with the black chart paper wherever possible and uh, there is a laptop over there which actually which is shooting and then there's the camera and mm-hmm. for the lighting purpose i had a ring light here and then i had a mm-hmm. couple of tube lights which were already lit up here and there but overall the lighting was set in such a way so that we already require minimal lighting only so while we were uh, finalizing on look and feel we were also thinking that you know we don't have a lot of budget because it's a in house project there's no client who is paying us to do it so uh, so we already thought that okay we'll need a very minimal lighting for this so this will be okay to go so this was the turn table which was actually rotating when the whole uh, circus was happening in the between and um, this was actually a cake turner this was no mechanism this was like a cake turner which i bought for like some 200 rupees and i just rotated it every time here you'll see a lot of marking and you know math has been gone behind it where how much it it is going to be rotated every time i take a break yes yes so yeah and it's just a small demo i i must how... say that you you have done quite an efficient jugaad for everything yeah and yeah. that's that's i think a very necessary quality for an animator especially when it comes to stop motion stop motion animator is to be honest half of the deal is to just pro- problem solve because mm. most of the time you will uh, for a, for every project there are different problems there are very diff- the very different problem you will come up with and then you just have to find a solution so uh most of the time you are actually just solving those problems being a stop motion director i have learned in the last two years that you know people get worried about just the problems so if mm-hmm. if you just try and solve the problem and then it just becomes a little easy so i try to make all my task little easy that's it okay okay uh this is just a small uh, clip how i arranged the zoitro
yeah so the cubes mm-hmm. are rotating then mm-hmm. those things are jumping inside and uh, in the end you'll see uh, some letterings are formed you know they are coming they are forming but yes. the whole thing was shot re- in reverse so every time okay. i used to cut it and then put a cap back on so it then we reversed it in the post where you see mm-hmm. it, them growing right okay and then for me it was the first time that the camera is animating so we had the camera on a slider where the camera was shifting mm-hmm. so these are the test shoots just before i took the final renders so as you were asking you know a lot of rigs were there and the yes must be mm-hmm. there so here you can see there are a lot of rigs which are actually backstage i've kept here also there are some look of- looks like a set for transformers <laughs> <laughs> only if they were made from cardboard so yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay wonderful yeah and uh, i had so a lot of problem solving you see here also so there was this mm-hmm. letter c uh, which i had to place in the same position when i remove it and cut it and put it back for the mm-hmm. for the click so i kept a, a magnet over there so that there were three axes you have to match one is the z axis the height of it then mm-hmm. there is in which uh, direction it is kept like the angle of the letter so that when you play it it shouldn't be like it should actually look like it's right. coming out really it's smoothly moving on a path on a path right yeah okay but everything mm-hmm. right now you're handling with your hands you don't have a 3d software to just you know snap back or something so here whatever mistakes we are going to do we have to even plan for the mistakes so mm-hmm. so here uh, i kept a i took a pair of magnet and i kept one on the rig and one on the piece itself so whenever i cut it i used to just snap it when wherever the magnet is so i don't i fixed the rig there okay okay on the stage okay so i didn't kind of a, a process to do the registration registration yes like we do in 2d animation you know the the traditional light box thing yeah 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 okay. so how you have the peg bar right right yeah 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 mm-hmm. right something like that you can say but yes so there was a disaster also where the camera fell and then you know i had to oh. repair it back and then i kept i placed the camera back on the same position it was it took me around two days to do the thing but mm. yeah and then post production was very minimal but wherever there was a overlapping of the rig we removed all the rigs from there so like here you can see there was a rig so we removed the rig and f- from the overlapping part that's it from overlapping okay. from with the cardboard not okay. with the background back with for the background thing we kept the whole thing same and uh, only in this shot we had the bird shot separately and the whole this thing was shot separately because here we had more than 38 items and the objects mm. which are getting animated so i had to move every and one all, of them all these were animated like simultaneously or simultaneously yes oh okay yeah so the bird was shot separately and mm. this section the lower section was shot separately and then we sort of composed it in the post and mm. then uh, sound and the music which was done by troy vasant from blackbird studios i'll play it
Wow. That okay. was like real fun, I guess. The sound design part. Yeah. I haven't, no. to be honest, I, I haven't explored it yet, this section of it. But mm -hmm. I really want to go and explore the sound also. I think sound design, um, you know, proves to be the backbone of of the entire animation. Like it is actually adding, adding that element to every shot. And nobody it's, can uh, imagine what, what was the original sound from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, it is 50% of the film. Uh, the sound and the music. Mm -hmm. Like when you see a visual and what you hear, it, it mm -hmm. has to go hand in hand. Right, so it right. is a very essential part of what you are showing as an experience. It adds to the experience of the viewer. Right, right. Okay, so that was uh, <clears throat> that was kind of a case study for the entire project and you shared so much. So half of the questions, I guess, are already covered. But uh, moving on, let's let's try to understand, uh, you know, the role of of different people within the production. Like what are the major artist roles when we talk about uh, a stop motion animation pipeline? And as you are working as a director also, so what is the role of the director? Like how okay. much of an involvement is there in the actual process? Or is it more of, you know, just guiding the, the creative side of things? Okay. So I am working as an animation director. I'll just mm -hmm. rectify on that. Yeah. As a director, I have worked with Suresh Ariyat and Rajesh Thakre. Rajesh Thakre's work you have seen just now, yes. where mm -hmm. I was working as an animation director. And mm -hmm. in the in JSW, I have not directed the animation. I that was my first project uh, okay. going in the Studio Exorus, where mm -hmm. I was the stop motion animator, working alongside with Santosh. He mm -hmm. he was the animation director in JSW. And okay. uh, after doing that project, I got opportunity to direct animation for the seed that was the clay animation and the mm -hmm. Pune Design Festival film, which I mm -hmm. recently did. Mm -hmm. So, in in uh, stop motion animation, mostly uh, uh, right now I am the one who is directing also and animating also, but okay. uh, I I am. I have a lot of, like, I rely on a lot of people. And that mm -hmm. is the prop people who make props and who who develop and sculpt these things for me. So, and for that, we have some Sanjay Patkar in Studio Exorus who, who actually, you know, sculpts and uh, do his magic and make those beautiful props. So, the pipeline goes like that, you know, I... I uh, mostly talk with Suresh. So mm -hmm. whatever he has in mind, I I I I want that uh, that you know I take care of that whatever he's trying to uh, you know see. I try to do better than what he is expecting, and okay. uh, I try to I I try to take that from him, and I also implement my own ideologies and my own you know mm -hmm. thinking to it and. Then adding all that, I try to direct people that how we are going to, you know, conduct this shot. Like a shot is actually like a, like a hurdle, to be honest. Like mm -hmm. one shot goes from one day to 10 day. So it can actually get finished in like two hours or one shot can actually take like a month to finish sometimes. So it depends on short complexity, short lighting like how heavy is the lighting are we getting like a sunlight are we doing like a very dark shot are we doing like mm -hmm. an underground shot so all that depends because it's a stop motion animation we need real lights to be thrown so yes we have a we have a dop who comes mm -hmm. in who mm -hmm. sets up the light when okay so I'll, I'll okay so what i'll do is i'll try to explain when we set up a shot how mm -hmm. we do it okay so um firstly we have a schedule we have a shoot schedule made mm -hmm. 
so where all the shots are written and on what day we are going to shoot this shot okay and on, on what day this shot is going to be set up so there are two things one is mm -hmm. the setup and second is the shoot so if the setup is done properly then only we can shoot if the setup is not done properly we'll have to redo the setup yeah so similar to the live action filmmaking stuff like little, you yes <clears throat> actually are scheduling happens. and arranging things yes. accordingly yeah. yes okay. yes we need we need proper ad's to actually schedule these mm -hmm. things so mm -hmm. that um, because there are real things which are involved so we have to source material we have to source the light people we have to, we have to source the stage we have to source the camera we have to source all these human resources we have to source so in jsw more than 20 prop designers were there but only two people animated so there were actually a lot of work which was which we were getting dependent on the prop designer hmm. so that so that we can get the props and we can animate it and in jsw we re, we used replacement animation in replacement animation what you do is you change the whole prop which okay changes the whole launch uh whole shape and the form of the object okay so, so instead of uh, instead of like morphing the same object you are using a different version yes. which has you know <clears throat> that kind of intermediate form or intermediate position of that yes. okay so every frame is kind of a different prop in itself yes is that okay yes. all right so even before uh, starting the animation what we do is we lock on the camera mm -hmm. this process we call scaling in the mm. scaling part what we do that uh, uh, we 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 have to be absolutely sure that in what scale we are working on like how big are the props going to be mm. how big are the characters going to be so for the jsw specifically for the jsw i'm talking about here so we had a very standard scaling because the camera was always same camera was not moving so we mm. had a maximum length and a minimum length okay. so automatically we you know grabbed the proportion of the frame like how big the props will be overall mm. in general mm. because mm. to be honest it was a very simple shoot if you see it 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 looks like a product shoot when you when you see it very technically mm -hmm. if you see it yes yes okay yeah so that was not very hard but in in the seed the film in the the seed where the characters are mm. there mm. where uh, where you see a lot of daylight night light and you see and it's a magical world so you see red light purple light blue light yellow mm. light everywhere and it's a very colorful film there there are blue characters so in whatever light we put in you know they change color sometimes the the characters were look, were looking green so mm -hmm. so we didn't want that we we so yeah so the setup so, was uh, very different was there it, about about the seed film i am curious to know that was there a light within that seed prop also like it used yeah, to glow? yeah yeah okay. yeah so in the seed film i have take care i have taken care that uh, nothing is done cg nothing mm -hmm. is done in cg even okay. the sky which you see the clouds which you see the lights you see everything is done in front of camera uh there 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 will be a couple of bts films which will be coming soon uh mm -hmm. within the next week we have already worked on it some quite a quite a lot of uh, project inquiry came so that we couldn't you know work it out but now we are sort of free to work on our bts films so they are going to be released so pretty soon so in 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 this the seed film there were four sizes of character the biggest one was around 16 16 centimeters and the smallest one was around half an inch so how it works is that you know whenever you have the close up shots like the first shot where where the character sees that there's a comet 
so that was the biggest shot the biggest sorry biggest character where you see all the expressions very clearly but but for the smaller uh, characters what we do we you we use them in the long shots where you will only see them running you won't see the cat you won't see their expressions that much detail only we don't need so you will only see them running or maybe just going somewhere that much only so and we shot that whole film in a in a 20 by 28 feet room the whole film so even that was a very big restriction for us like how we are going to do the pull out shot and all that so the pull out shot was actually a big a big cheat <laughs> like a big cheat where uh, we made Ixorus logo ka four variations and the biggest logo was you know it was i don't know the sizes but it was big enough that i can hug it and the smallest one was around this much so we cheat on the camera where it looks like that the that we are pulling out from the planet and we are going really far away but actually it's the prop changing but also the the skill set of the prop designer who is who made the prop that is Vishal yeah. Matre, he exactly matched it. Like he's he he his talent is like too good. Where he exactly matched with the with like the whole four variations were pretty much same with the same texture with the same lines. So a lot of things were there to manage, but he managed it quite well. That is why the shot is working really nice. Uh, so it so in the stop motion animation, you'll see these pro like we are relying on a lot of people. It's a teamwork. It's a huge teamwork mm -hmm. where uh, uh, everything goes hand in hand. The prop designing and the staging, the scaling, uh, and basically when the animation happens, it's just that you know everything is done but now the final thing is in your hand so that time i get a bit nervous where, where you know that you know for the last three months people have been working for this time where mm -hmm. everything is going to be finally animated so you know performance that pressure, pressure. Is, mm -hmm. yeah that pressure is always there but i deal it with food so i just okay. serve myself a lot of good food and <clears throat> that is how i deal with it and uh, okay. you know i just try to stay happy because it's a very physical thing where if you are you know i i feel that if i'm a bit off the mood or something i won't be able to do good work so i try to keep myself happy in that section so that i can animate well all and, right, all right. and i think for the last pune design film festival we own mm -hmm. in this also uh, we had a black background and uh, props were there so we had only one size that hand and the ball and there was a play be between them and this was actually uh, to be honest it was a sh simple shoot but the deadline was you know like too crunched up because pre-production took a lot of time and i only had some seven days to shoot this film but I really wanted to do it. So Suresh was asking, is it manageable? Like, do you want to do it? Like, f he he was asking because, you know, only seven days are there. So do you even want to do it? Like that, he was asking. So then I was like, no, I really want to do it because the animatic looks great. Like, like how I told you, animatic is already done and the film is already there in our heads. Mm -hmm. So it's just the final look of it and the final, who is going to, you know, take it off like that so okay. then i was like no no I, I i really want to do it and then i like for the last three days i was literally sleeping in the studio and i was just doing i just wanted to do it so i just went ahead and did the whole thing and with me part cursor was there part like who makes the prop and who he's a master of sculpting who uh so i go go to him with a lot of broken hands and he fixes all of them for effort and he gives mm -hmm. it back to me for animating and then because i twist them like in a very weird way and then he'll be like okay i'll i'll finish it no problem <laughs> and then he gives it back so having him 
by my side always make me relief uh, make my mind relief that you know okay nothing mm-hmm. will go wrong everything will be there so so he is yeah. kind of uh, you know the creator of the props and also the doctor who comes to fix them yeah <laughs> He, okay. he is actually a doctor. He is he mm. is a proper doctor. I I, I have seen him a lot, lot of time. He is drilling. He is you know he is with this drilling mm. machine and he is drilling inside the character like that. And it actually feels like he is doing some sort of operation or some surgery okay, yes. with the character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot of fun with stop motion because uh, uh, because it, it it comes with physical. Physically making contact with people, physically touching things, and mm. uh, that is why you share a lot of emotions with people and you talk a lot with people. So I feel this like stop motion. I I I love um, I love how stop motion is, but also with the things it comes with, like you know, talking with people and uh, collaborating in very mm-hmm. different ways. So. I I never thought of all these when I was entering this field, but I'm cherishing it. So a lot of collaboration, a lot of teamwork, and lots of sleepless nights. Yes, I guess all is you know very rewarding in the end. When you look yeah, at the when... final product, it should it should be really rewarding. Yeah. Okay, so. <clears throat> moving on to the next question like uh, when when we think about audience engagement like how how do you uh, you know engage with your audience through the stop motion animations what do you hope the viewers will you know take away from your work or from from the film is it something that you already have in your mind or uh, it's it's very spontaneous uh to be honest uh, first whenever i make anything i try to please myself i first i see that you know even if i am getting entertained with it mm-hmm. so uh, and then i i try to break that feeling where uh, uh, if it's like i i really want to feed something very new like i people should feel that it's something new what i saw is not is not something which they have seen before mm-hmm. so that sort of approach i want to keep always whenever i do my work and uh i like how i told you know i i want i i love flipping people's mind where where they see something but they it turned out to be something else so that sort of, of thing i really surprise elements yes Okay. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So okay. that sort of approach I have with uh, everything. Okay. Like, okay. I think you are quite successful in doing that. I mean, there. Uh, <clears throat> as far as uh, the most of the recent films that you have done the animation direction for, have all been really, you know. Um, i would say unconventional and very surprising and you know very uh, very dynamic in a sense that you know we get to travel within a small set but it looks like it is you know a grand thing all the props all the movements that are happening and you know the sound design behind that so everything is uh, is very very engaging and very interesting to watch that that is what we also hope that mm-hmm. you know this this is what like when we are making the film now like we also think that you know people will go blast with this you'll see this and like that we we think when when we are shooting it mm-hmm. so taking every frame uh, like in so in in pdf i took uh, around like every every day i used to animate around 2 seconds okay mm. so in every frame you are actually living every frame so in every frame i used to give like you know people will go mad when they will see this frame like mm-hmm. this frame mm. so so we play more like that 
so what can i add in every frame no that sort of thoughts come always like yeah i think that it's, that it's a, creates you know a sequence of wow moments throughout the film like if you are putting in that much effort on every frame then the audience engagement i think is is quite uh, normal and quite obvious yeah but firstly it's 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 all about uh, for for me it's all about like if i am liking it i'll i'll do it mm-hmm. for now yeah okay mm. all right and uh, <clears throat> you mentioned uh, you know some of the tools that are usually used like the rigs and um, the armatures what what kind of um, other tools or software are you using for most of the projects okay so and for the software we have we right now actually have only one stop solution that is drag and frame if you know mm-hmm. uh, ardman <coughs> do shawn the sheep and uh, like a uh, create yes, films yes yes mm-hmm. they create on drag and frame only and mm-hmm. it's a very very advanced software for especially made for stop motion purpose where you can you know type notes for every frame you can skip you can add skip holes you can uh, you can on real time you can play that animation and check if that is working okay or not. okay they, mm-hmm. and the software can be connected to all the dslrs and really high red cameras and all that so you can actually mm-hmm. shoot very <clears throat> high quality 6k 8k films on okay. dragon frame so i'm using that software only from since the beginning and uh, uh and for the stop motion rigs and armatures uh they they weren't actually available in india and uh, so what what they are first i'll tell that okay so there are two things that one is the armature and second is the rig armature is actually a body structure of the character so for body to move and behave in certain way you need a character rig like it mm-hmm. it is very similar to the bones you have inside you so so for the dog it will be a different structure for humanoid it will be a very different structure for for child it will be a very different structure so like that if your character is bulky it will be a different structure where the chest and uh, and chest area is like really broad and in you know, the pelvis is like really short so that sort of so the character armatures are very customizable thing where you can make your own character and then you can make the armature and put the clay or whatever material you are thinking to put on it okay. so that when you pose it holds a pose so, so <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry so is the armature like reusable once you are done with a project do you yeah. like uh, strip off the material from the character and use the armature again or you use another set of tools for the new project it, it is reusable but uh, for every character so you have a certain bone length mm-hmm. so either you will have to think of similar bone lengths okay okay mm-hmm. you can you can reuse it no matter what but uh, uh you know you went, like mostly it happened with me i end up loving the character and just, i just keep it like that and i buy a new one mm-hmm. so i get a new one for that but uh, what happens is that you can reuse those things but the bone length has to be same and then you will have to see what all things you can reuse for the new character it's just the size variation which i'm talking about nothing else okay mm-hmm. and the second tool which comes is the rig support rig which helps mm-hmm. you to keep things in the air like a prop where mm-hmm. if, for example if you if your character is playing like a tennis ball or something with something huh? and the ball is you know flying so the rig will help you to hold that ball in a certain way wherever you want it to be it's like a 360 articulated helping hand you can say which okay. will you know make things fly for you it will make the character jump fly do mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. something like that everything off ground basically because with okay. the ground 
you automatically have some sort of help so you don't need the rig because you have to clean the rig also in the post hmm so so that that uh, post production part has to be like dealt on a frame by frame basis like you check every yeah. frame and remove the rigs that are visible yes okay. so there there it's it's a proper profession where we call them clean up artists mm-hmm. where they come and they clean all the rigs uh frame by frame mostly they do it in nuke software because it it mm-hmm. happens very really nicely there a lot of people also do it in after effects and photoshop when mm-hmm. i do it i do it in after effects because it's very convenient for me when it comes to because you can click a mask and then frame by frame on the timeline you can just mm-hmm. change the mask position so using the roto brush no Use using the, the mask for that okay simple, simple mask. mask simple yeah mask. yeah yeah mm-hmm. so we we take a clean plate mm-hmm. and then we put it in the back and then uh, where the rigs are not there the clean plates basically no rig no character no only mm-hmm. only uh, the setup and the lighting we'll take a frame like that and then we'll okay. uh, mask all the rings in our armatures so these two tools actually they are they 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 are like very essential tools in stop motion but uh, we never show them in the final animations because you know they are sort of integrated in it and like but yeah lot, i i started with you know jugads and a lot of makeshifts i did for the rigs and i feel they are very essential like people should make makeshifts they they are really great but till a point i feel till a point because for this profession we have mechanical engineers who are actually working on it they they it's a very different profession where uh, uh, if you if you go in figuring out tricks you will start losing the storytelling part of the film so just don't go till that point where you okay. forget the film and you just you know make the mm. rigs and rigs that's it it's because that those are not very essential to be honest i got into it because i to be honest i started figuring out the whole process no but they are and, uh, actually supporting uh, a lot of uh, things within the set like yeah. <clears throat> they might not be you know uh very very essential but you need to have an alternate if you don't have a proper rig so you will anyways need to work on that to so better yeah. buy a proper rig for that so like how i said um it's it's a it's a it's a very user interface type of thing where mm. uh uh if you keep a makeshift rig you will always have to deal with certain things Yes. So if you don't want to deal with those sort of uncertainties, mm-hmm. then maybe a professional rig can help you with that. Where mm-hmm. if you're shooting like a minute long film, I'll I'll suggest you get a rig and a armature and do it. If you are shooting less than it, then yeah, wires will work for sure because they tend and to where, break also. Where can we get these rigs and armatures from? Like in India, to be honest, it's the only. <laughs> it's the only the stop place, motion the stop company motion. the stop motion company is the only place right now in india uh and from outside there are a couple of places i am mm-hmm. not inspired with the kinetic armatures and their 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 work to be honest i used to spam that guy and i learned a lot from spamming him and he used to be like okay tell me what do you need okay and then <laughs> then i learned a lot of things from him he has a youtube channel also he his name is edu okay edu poetras he's he's from spain and i have learned a lot of things from his youtube and uh, personally communicating to him on instagram and spamming and they yeah, that is how i've learned because in india there there is there is a very less education about stop motion and a lot of rumors about stop motion mm. but i feel uh, slowly we can spread the knowledge and you know pick these points and tell to people great so <clears throat> so for the audience uh, if anyone requires any sort of rigs and armatures you know where to go 
the stop motion company and i'll put the links in the description as well so aman uh, also tell us about your journey as a founder like oh, when you thought of you know creating this uh, the stop motion company and uh, the the problems that it is solving and what are the other aspects like as an artist how do you deal with the marketing and uh, all those shenanigans like how do you how do you do that okay so uh okay so when i when i did the graduation project the blackboard one uh i made a lot of makeshifts and in between i got a lot of ideas that you know this can be solved like this and this can be done like this and it can be a better rig and it can but i didn't had time i didn't had a lot of time that like when while i was doing the blackbird project i just wanted to finish the project so that but i kept writing all those ideas down i kept writing all those ideas down and i i was like okay next time next time next time and uh, when that when i finished my film and i wasn't in a hurry of getting a job i then i and a lot of people after after publishing after launching this blackbird project a lot of people messaged me and they were like you know where where did you get the rigs where did you, because you can mm-hmm. actually see the rigs in the film so where did you get the rigs where where did you get these stands and all that they were asking and uh, i i got this idea like one of i was telling it to one of my friend i got irritated with this these sort of comments because i was like why are people looking at the stands here they should look at the film <laughs> <laughs> like okay why are they then they are like ki um, so one of my friend who is actually not in animation design he is my school friend so i just told him very irritatingly and he was like mm. you know you can build a business out of it if people are asking you yeah, and he is actually a ce and why not yeah he he's mm. a ce he is a ce now okay. so okay so he told me that you know why not build a film and then i was like no yeah it's not my arena it's not it's not something which i can do mm. i don't think like you'll waste a lot of time and all that but then slowly this thing wasn't going away like this thought wasn't going away from my head and after after some you know 6 7 months of procrastination i was like okay i'll mm. make it and then i started designing these things i started uh, making making a lot of sketches about how these rigs can be and how very very product design thing i did to be honest mm. but i was loving it because it was the whole thing was related to stop motion and uh, uh, then i took all those designs to manufacturers and you know the the people who cut mu- steel basically so i took it to them and i was like can we make something like this and they were all like okay how many pieces you want to make i was like make, make some 50 pieces hmm. this much only i can do. but make one sample first then i'll approve hmm. for 50 pieces i said hmm. then he was like ki we make 50 for samples da we don't make <laughs> we don't make <laughs> one for one for sample so okay. basically most of the vendors they denied making they denied mm-hmm. making a uh, sample and they they were like i think most know, of them people. work on huge quantities like yeah they It's they are very manufacturing to... people mm-hmm. they just manufacture in large scale so things yeah <clears throat> then i did a freelance project i got some money accumulated mm-hmm. then i uh bought machineries okay. i bought machineries i learned how to use machineries i made first sample at my home i mm-hmm. i chopped plates of aluminium steel everything my hands were looking black <laughs> okay so <laughs> that's very so, inspiring like if you don't find anyone to do it do it yourself i think that's yeah like it's good yeah. i was just you know my parents were asking you did a bachelor of design degree why are you do <laughs> why are you doing this <laughs> you're ma- you're not making films anymore or what so i was like okay just wait just just wait i can't explain i don't think i can explain i said and then mm. i just continued doing it and then i came up with the final design of uh, 
of the of the rig first and amateur work was going on because it was already in the r and d and i couldn't mm. i couldn't find some of the solutions so it was going in but this rig when it was made it gave me a hope that okay i can actually build this thing and then when that sample was built i took it to manufacturers okay this is something which i want to build and then i found i found a guy uh, who was as crazy as me and uh, this guy was ready to like he he's not very aged also that is why i think he was ready to do uh, mm-hmm. you know these work on these crazy ideas i i said i'll i'll come and work it with you with you in the workshop if you want as agar kaise and then he he saw something in me and he was like okay i'll do it for you and uh, then and he told me a lot of lot of lot of things like he made my design better with his you know he said that why do you why is sticking this bolt in this we can make it extruded like this it will look better so mm-hmm. all these additions were added through him um and then we in the end we launched the stop motion company where it was there with the rigs and the armatures and to be honest it's been it's been 2 years we have supplied to mostly universities like the biggest clients are this mm-hmm. uh, universities and xor studios obviously because i'm already mm-hmm. working there so uh, idc we have given we have given to uh, one sec i have to check no i'm so you pull out your client list now <laughs> okay so we have supplied to iit bombay we have supplied to dy patil school of design we have supplied to symbiosis uh now we are just now we have done billa institute of design sorry billa institute of technology that is in yes, jaipur yes. itself mm-hmm. then jumbaya then uh, there is parul university we are already in talk yeah. with shristi shristi now and mm-hmm. uh, yeah and lot more people i was focusing more on uh, universities because of one reason that is students so that people because students can't buy like i was in a position where i couldn't buy these expensive uh, stop motion rigs and armatures because they mm-hmm. are expensive they yes. are more than 10 they are more than 10k 12k 15k even 30k if you look mm-hmm. across websites mm-hmm. which are outside india and you know after buying also you'll get a import tax and this and that so it was too much to be honest for a student when and i didn't had this liberty and uh, that just to try out can i just buy it just to try out you know that sort of liberty so for that just to try out and just to explore i wanted these to be available in the universities so that people can just use them at least and just take a taste mm. of stop motion what how it feels how does it is it your genre is it is it something which you can do so i, I think that that this. makes a huge difference actually like you are you are actually uh, you know placing your product on on a very foundational level where people are going to use it and you know it's kind of a uh, it's kind of planting a seed yeah just like your film <laughs> yeah everything starts no, from scene wonderful yeah i feel so i and, hope we uh, are, um, i hope you know maximum universities maximum institutes get to you know buy your rigs and more and more students and more and more artists get into you know stop motion and create some crazy films what yeah. do you think about uh, like 3D printing. Have you been using some sort of 3D prints in your projects? I I haven't explored 3D printing yet, but yeah, okay. I have seen couple of couple of films like uh, Pinocchio. If you see, it inspired mm-hmm. me that I like none of the films inspired me to get into 3D printing, but Pinocchio is the one where I felt okay, 3D printing something which we can we mm-hmm. can develop something else. so i don't want to use 3d printing as 3d printing but for sure 3d printing can be a good tool 
where we can print some of the props and save a lot of time mm -hmm. somewhere uh, we can make some basic structures and you know uh, i was also thinking of printing something in plastic like as in 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 the in the 3d printing but the feel of it can be very different yeah. so, uh, so so far you guys are not using 3d printing at xora studios no 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 okay. no, no, no okay everything is hand sculpted and handmade mm -hmm. all right wonderful so um you mentioned some of the inspirations that you yeah. have like most of them are artists um, you know outside of india yeah most How of them does... are outside india <clears throat> they but i'm sure are... like um, there are inspirations in india as well and yes. uh, how how does uh, indian culture and storytelling you know influence your stop motion animations are there like any specific uh, themes or elements of indian culture that you like to incorporate into your work um like this whole uh, i i feel from the bachpan only i have seen a lot mm -hmm. of uh, being in jaipur uh, mm -hmm. i've been to toy museums like initially wooden toys toys and a lot of physical physical element of playing with things no it mm -hmm. has always uh peers my heart like you know entering my heart more than the digital sort of playing i never okay. liked the temple run like mm -hmm. most of my age people loved playing mm -hmm. in temple but i never played temple run to be honest i never had a phone uh like screen phone till i was in college and i i was always mostly you know uh, infused with uh, uh playing physically like you know pakadam pakadai ke lai uh to and uh, going with may i i've made lot of ravans bahut sara ravan sab banaya hai and uh, used to be fun yes personal yeah. ravan bana ke usko jalana yes. hai and yes yes mera sabse zyada noisy rahega <laughs> like yes, yes. lot of things like that, that. Mm -hmm. yeah so from the bachpan only these things have been infused in me where uh, i was more in love with the, the physical objects so when i came when i went to animation uh, like everything was there like like 3d in 3d also i used to love the visuals but mm -hmm. i never connected with them as much as i could with stop motion okay so you didn't connect with the process of creating that maybe you loved the yeah. output but you were looking for a different process yeah i never i never saw myself working with okay. the 3d elements so as of now to be honest whenever i go whenever i go enter studio xorus and i start doing my work it always feels like that i'm just going and playing with some clay objects mm -hmm. and coming back to home so it never feels like that you know you're sitting at the screen you're doing something and then you're coming back it, it is always mm -hmm. like you're going and playing with the thing and then coming back so i think so that's the best like part a, of of work if yeah. you are enjoying it if you are if it's you know a play for you i think that's that's the best part yeah so for now i am feeling that and mm -hmm. yeah so but i'm still exploring so i'm never restricted to one thing even if i like something i try to bring it to stop motion do it something in stop motion mm -hmm. then yeah <clears throat> okay wonderful so as an uh, as an artist like do you have uh, some down times or low moments like do you you know get to speculate on things that whether you'll be able to do this or not do you judge your own work absolutely like that happens <laughs> to to everybody i guess mm -hmm. but like there are a lot of down times where where you know you you feel like whatever you're doing is not worth wherever you feel like that okay who is even watching all this mm. like okay there's no market for this nobody is paying you for this 
lot of time these sort of questions arise and you question your whatever you are doing you question yourself that why are you even doing this so mm -hmm. that dilemma happens yes but uh, to be honest always there are there are friends and uh, there, there are some inspirations who will post something good mm. and that becomes like oh shit i need to do something so you know so i i just feel that keep i i recently figured this uh, this can go a little philosophical but i i, I just want to say that uh, um in a profession like art i feel you have to take care of your own motivation where mm. you keep feeding yourself something to keep your passion alive so to keep your passion alive it is a responsibility of your consciousness that you keep that child alive so keep feeding it something mm. otherwise it shouldn't die that's it i think uh, if if we make if we keep making efforts to just you know survive through these phases the universe yeah. automatically gives us some signs and you know gives us a little push that yeah. takes us takes us to the you know next uh, good moment yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay all right so for the young aspirants and for people who are looking to get into stop motion or even trying to learn the art form what do you suggest like what do they focus more on or what is the best way to learn and practice stop motion um i feel i feel uh, it, it it stop motion is just a medium uh, i also started with hand drawn animation i also started i also did all the basics of animation drawing and uh, i feel it is very important to 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 be a actor first like for animator i feel mm. if you get the acting if you take that acting seriously if a character is very sad the way the way he'll drink a cup of water no is very different mm -hmm. from from the way he'll drink mm. he, when he's happy so that so whenever you are animating if 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 the viewer is getting the communication that this guy is happy and the body mm. language of it then you are a successful animator and basically the your your motive is to communicate the action and the feeling of the character itself what the character is feeling is he feeling sad is he feeling happy is he feeling joyful is he anxious is he is he like you know desperate about something Mm -hmm. so that emotions should come without saying a word so it has been said that when you don't have dialogues but you can communicate the essence of the character through the acting then you mm -hmm. are a good animator okay so performance and acting has to be you know the main focus yes to work on okay and uh, <clears throat> when it comes to you know learning the animation principles uh do you think it is you know easier to do it uh, in the 2d animation uh, as compared to execute that in stop motion uh, or does it like it... work in a similar way like, uh, like if you are if you are clear with the principles you will be able to implement them anywhere or does the medium make a difference like what has been your experience uh i feel you can directly i still feel that uh, if if you have pencil mm -hmm. and a paper you can learn the basics more faster and understand the fundamentals properly you can experiment with stop motion so that the interest can be more when you do it and okay. you can actually see it practically what is happening when you move it in a physical space you understand the dynamic of it like how is this principle even working yeah so mm -hmm. you understand that part of it but uh, for me uh, i also i used to take stop motion workshop where i used to teach a lot of kids chotu kids mm -hmm. stop motion 
and uh, i have also taken advanced workshop where i've taught uh, bigger people like uh, college going people uh, mm -hmm. stop motion there uh, they used to very quickly get it when they do it in stop motion maybe take a clay ball or something yeah. and just place the phone on the top and you just start mm -hmm. playing with the ball like what will happen with the ball should it jump should it not jump should it just you know bounce it off so what what should happen with the ball so slowly you get the physics of how animation is working mm -hmm. so you need to learn the physics of gravity how the gravity is pulling and all that mm -hmm. so i think that can be a good so, start a uh, lot of like beginner artists struggle with drawing you know so it's very tough for them to get hold of the principles through drawing maybe if yeah. they can experiment with the uh, you know the physical objects and try to understand the concepts of timing spacing and you know uh, all the other principles maybe it's it's uh, easier for them do you think so like in your workshops yes. what do you prefer do you if someone who is uh, someone who is totally a fresher or totally new to the concept of animation do you teach them the principles with the help of drawings first or do you directly go ahead with stop motion uh, exercises uh, i i take a very i take very basic elements like cubes circle mm -hmm. or maybe a triangle is also okay so okay. i can i just you know make some lines like a very guided lines like mm -hmm. like a guide only one okay. line and i try to teach them the dynamic of how this ball is going to travel from point a to point b, point a to point b. Okay. but mm -hmm. but very slow to fast to slow mm -hmm. so how will that thing that physics will work that the movement can be slow and the fast so the gapping will be more and then the less so that sort of principles they can understand even mm -hmm. without drawing also they can understand these sort mm -hmm. of principles but uh with you know simple shapes and all that then mm -hmm. they can slowly go complex if they want to yes okay so drawing uh, plays uh, an important role to help you yes. you know visualize things and to adapt it to different mediums maybe i'll say Is you will so? have a you will have a you know stronger foundation upper, of yeah you will have a upper hand if you if you know the drawings mm -hmm. like, yeah okay okay all right so what are your uh, future aspirations like uh, where do you see the indian stop motion industry going in uh, you know for the next 5 years or a decade uh to be honest i have seen people are coming back to stop motion and mm -hmm. like how in music traditional music tabla and everything has became a luxury now so i feel stop motion animation is something where so much human resource and so much you know human very very it's a very personal art where you you're mm -hmm. sitting and doing a very tedious thing so i think slowly it is becoming a uh, very it's a style which very less people can afford and uh, and i feel it's a very i don't know it's a it's a very personalized thing mm -hmm. where you can where i've seen people making uh, you know their own brand films uh, like a like a signature film like this is a film which will keep forever yes yes that sort of thing mm -hmm. so i feel uh like the industry haven't seen the full potential of stop mm -hmm. motion animation in mm -hmm. india but if we show them then the market is huge like there right. there is there are less people to do it to be honest like there are a whole lot of opportunities out there mm -hmm. but there are very less good animators who can actually do it so that is what i feel but but yeah the opportunities are great and when but i feel you have to show it once like you have to show what you can do yes in in in, in terms of visualization and in terms mm -hmm. of 
you know you have to show that what can you produce so that people can get like how it can be even used i i feel a lot of designers even don't know what like how stop motion is made and mm. uh, it is it will be very uh you know we we can't uh, just assume that our clients will be knowing the process and how the look and feel looks of stop mm. motion because it differs a lot and sometimes uh, it is very unrealistic for the client people also that we are taking 6 weeks for pre production then we'll take 10 mm. weeks for the production for shooting this film we'll do it frame by frame so that sort of things some clients don't understand so but the people who values their brand a lot and mm. uh, for, to be per- very particular if they have a very hand built products i feel for them stop motion works really good and for those sort of brands we are like i am trying to push in mostly for those sort of people where they have hand built projects and hand built mm-hmm. things so that we also make sense collaborating with them yes absolutely so we hope to get to see you know lot of stop motion in the coming future and uh, i hope more and more brands move towards these uh, you know mediums so that we as artists also try to grow and experiment and present something new and fresh to the audience and uh, thank you so much aman it has been really really inspiring and very informative and uh, thank you for thank you for joining us today and we would love to have you again sometime on the podcast and looking forward to that thank you so much thank you gaurav for you know uh, calling me and asking me for this podcast because uh, there are very few people uh, in india who are actually realizing and you know taking their time off and doing these sort of podcasts because they are actually essentials now and thank you for doing this thank you so much my pleasure my pleasure thank you so much